Welcome to Exploring Melbourne's Literature, a documentary focusing on Melbourne's connection to literary works and writing. We'll be taking you on a tour of Melbourne and showing you some locations that we think shows what Melbourne has to offer. I'm Marianne. I'm Lydia. And I'm Gemma. And we're excited to bring you along with us. Let's go to our first location. The State Library of Victoria is in the heart of Melbourne. Opposite Melbourne Central, State Library opened in February 1856 and only consisted of the Central Swanston Street front. The library is home of Melbourne's first exhibition buildings, National Gallery of Victoria and the Melbourne Museum. The library was envisioned as a great emporium of learning and many find the library as a great place to study, work and read. The library has collected every book published in Victoria since 1896, thanks to the Legal Deposit Disposition, which has created an amazing record of books and history of writing in Victoria. The State Library is currently being redeveloped, called Vision 2020. Vision 2020 is a refurbishment of the library's heritage spaces, the creation of new spaces for children and teenagers, and the reinvention of the library's services to embrace new technologies and promote digital literacy. Melbournians love the State Library and helps bring creative ideas to life. Let's go to our next location. In the busy city of Melbourne, you can find an antique bookshop on Collins Street called K. Craddock. This bookshop is unique for its secondhand books dating from the 15th to the 21st century. When you're inside the bookshop browsing around, you will notice owls everywhere, and we're about to find out why. What is the story behind the owls scattered throughout the bookshop? Well, it's something that's become customer driven. Um, I um, had a, about 40 years ago, one of my nieces made me an owl. Uh, wax candle at school mm -hmm. and I think I overreacted and my other niece made me one too and then they started giving them to me for birthdays and such when they saw them at school fates and because we've had room in most of our bookshops to put the hours mm -hmm. up we have and customers just love them and oh. they're all given to us we don't buy them we oh. don't sell them and we don't ask for them oh that's sweet yes where do you see your business going in five years Oh, I hope it's absolutely still where we are now and it's just doing exactly what we're doing now, only more so. Um, I don't see any, any change in it particularly other than um, growing all the time, very quietly. Have you always had the passion for books? Absolutely, yes. I was one of those children who, um, when we'd have a, um, a sleep on a Saturday afternoon, I would literally be the one with the torch under the bedclothes <laughs> reading a book. What is the eldest book that you think you've read? Oh, that I've read, um, oh, in its entirety, I, I really can't remember, but the oldest one that I've handled is uh, 1472. Wow. And did you enjoy it? Oh, absolutely fell in love with it. Yes. And what is your favourite book that you've ever read? Hmm. No, no particular one. Mm. Lots of favourites. Yeah. Depending on what mood I'm in as to... Yeah how I'm feeling at the time. I mean, I grew up loving the Enid Blyton books. I particularly like The Secret Garden. Um, I love James Thurber's writing. Uh, there's a book called The Diary of a Provincial Lady and you never get to know her name. Mm. And I reread that often. But there's lots of different ones. Oh, cool. Can you share about your experience of being co-founder of Lord Mayor's accommodation for nine years? Yes. I um, was driving to work one day um, about 11, 12 years ago, uh, listening to Talkback Radio. And the callers were lamenting the fact that some of the uh, popular stores were no longer in the city, like Tim the Toyman and Hellier's Chocolates. And I, my mother and I were approaching our 40th anniversary mm. in business. And I was sort of shouting in the car, holding onto <laughs> the, the, the wheel very hard, saying, but we're still there. Mm. and other businesses are still there. So it took a while to um, um, get Town Hall to accept it, but uh, Lord Mayor John So was the first to embrace the commendations and it's, it's, a, a, it's a, a recognition, it's not a mm. competition, a recognition yeah. of 
small business proprietors mm. who have maintained their business for 10 years or more within the city. Mm. And um, I was chair for 10 years and we recognised oh, hundreds and hundreds of businesses. Wow. So what makes this bookshop stand out? Oh, well, at our um, location for a start, I mean, it's very rare to find a bookshop of this kind, which is a very small business, mm. right in the centre of our most beautiful street yeah. in the city of Melbourne. Um, I think it's the combination of stock that we have, which is quite eclectic. Um, I think it's the owls. I think it's the um, I think it's a general atmosphere of being somewhere special, somewhere you've mm. not been before. Mm. How do I know? Um, thank you so much for pleasure. letting us interview you. Absolute and pleasure. We're very happy to feature Kate Craddock in our thank documentary. You. Thank you. Cooler Nation story such as Bunjil has shown that Melbourne has always had a great connection to literature. John Batman wrote that. Melbourne will be a village for everyone as he travelled down the Yarra River in 1835. 2018 marks the 10 year anniversary of Melbourne being crowned UNESCO's second city of literature behind Edinburgh. Some of the world's most famous authors call Melbourne home. Novelists, poets and other creatives find inspiration in Melbourne's culturally diverse atmosphere and locations. Some of our most famous authors are CJ Dennis, Christmas Chalkers and Geraldine Brooks. All Melburnians love to read. The Premier's Reading Challenge encourages young students to read as many books as they can during a certain set time. Since it began 14 years ago, over 45 million books have been read by 2 million students. Melbourne also has over 250 public libraries and houses the State Library of Victoria, giving access to all Victorians to creative pieces by other Australians. Located directly on the Flinders Street station is where you find the magical underground place of Campbell Arcade. In the heart of Melbourne City's thriving cultural literature brings you back to the 1950s era with a more modern 21st century vibe. Here lies Sticky Institute, the only business in Melbourne dedicated wholeheartedly to only zines. It started with Simone Ewison after visiting Europe in 1998. Travelling to Amsterdam, she visited a small bookstore called Boogie Woogie. Inspired by the creativity of the art, she travelled back to Melbourne and set up her idea of opening a zine store in 2001 with Luke Sinclair. When did Sticky Institute first establish? So we opened in on the 1st of April 2001. So what's that? 17 and a half years ago. Is there a meaning behind the store's name Sticky Institute? <laughs> um... No, but it's a really good name. So, and it was thought up. It was for the. Well, we we used to just be called Sticky. Okay. We yeah. added the institute in about two thousand and eight, but it, the name Sticky was thought up by one of the people who started the shop, Simone Newinson. So she's a Melbourne artist called Simone Newinson, and it's a good name because if it was up to me, I would have come up with something really boring like the Zine Shop. And yeah. the good the good thing about Sticky Institute as a name is. The shop's really changed every kind of two or so years that we've operated it, mm -hmm. and the name Sticky Institute can kind of mean anything. Whereas if it's called The Zine Shop, you are a shop that sells that zines. zines. Yeah, yeah, but it's good, so it's kind of, it means many different things to many different people, and the name is kind of open enough. So people who are interested in zines, they know that we're a zine shop, and that's what it means to them and it can mean whatever to anyone else. So I think it works, I think it works as a name. Well, as the co-founder of Sticky Institute, why did you decide to create an organization purely about zines? It's a long, it's a long and winding story to answer that. So when we first set up, there was five people involved in the project. Yeah. And I work, when I'm not working here, I work as a teacher. And when I'm working yeah. with my students, kind of tell them that you know if you're going to start a business you want to do all this kind of business plan and thinking through direction of the project and we didn't really do much of that okay. so when we started in 2001 there was five of us each of us had quite a different idea of what the space could be or would be so there was Richard and Andrew who were both coordinators at platform at the time so they ran the art cabinets out there and this was the platform um, office space 
So we asked if we could use their office space as our shop space. So because Richard and Andrew were platform coordinators, they were here once a week and they ran the shop during that time. And then I, Simone asked me originally to come on board because she knew I'd been making zines and the idea was that the shop could house zines, books, small artworks. And then we ran this wall here as a separate art space for the first year. Oh, yeah. So then, after about two years, Richard and Andrew both had babies and then moved on from platform. And so Simone and I took over platform and Sticky. So Sticky could kind of continue because we had a real passion for that. And then after about another year, I'd been bringing more and more zines to the space. And it was getting to the point where zines were starting to dominate the space. So we were just about to have that conversation. Was there too many zines in the space? And Simone met a boy and she moved to Brisbane for two years. So during that time I kept bringing more and more zines here. By the time she got back from Brisbane, I remember the day she came back, she came into the shop and these young kids came in and one of the kids said to the other, oh this is that shop I was talking about, this is Sticky Zine Shop. And so by that time our audience knew we were a zine shop and there was no kind of fighting it anymore. So we made the kind of decision in about 2006, 2007 that we were only going to stock zines, that's what we were going to focus on. Well, knowing that you have amazing people who love coming in to look, <laughs> buy or make um, their own zines in Sticky Institute, what is so important about Sticky Institute that makes it so special to you and the individuals who personally come here to make zines? Well, I think it's just, just the idea of participation. You know, if you go to the National Gallery of Victoria, for example, you can't just rock up there with your painting and say, I want my painting on the walls. You know, yeah. if you come to Sticky, the idea is if you make a zine, we will put it directly onto the walls and it's going to be for sale immediately. And anyone can do that. And, you know, zines, they can be huge projects which take several years to make or they can be really tiny and take 30 seconds to make. So anyone can really get involved at whatever scale they want to, and they can bring it here, and they can put it straight on the shelf, and it will be for sale. So the, then you kind of think about that further. You know, we'll have you know, kind of high school kids, 14, 15, and they come here, they bring their artwork, and they engage with an artist around space, and they understand its structure, they understand how it operates, and they understand how they can make things and be part of that. And it's just really exciting that it's so inclusive because the art world can be a big, scary place, you know, at times yeah, and not yeah. very friendly. So I think we've always tried to be a friendly space. And if someone is making something which falls into the realm of what we stock, we want to have it here and so people can see it. Where do you see your organisation going? Where do we, oh, yes, it's a good question. Because, uh, yeah. Well, uh, the, it's complicated. The main thing we do is we run this zine shop. That's what we do. Yeah. So we coordinate that. The other main thing we do is we run a zine festival every February called the Festival of the Photocopier. Yeah. And so that has grown and grown since we first ran it 10 years ago. So currently we're trying to run the zine for next February which is now in the biggest room of the Melbourne Town Hall we're trying to move that from a one day zine festival one day zine fair to a two day zine fair to try and fit everyone in because originally we ran it out the front of the shop here and it had 50 stalls the first year had 65 the second year had 80 the next year had 95 the year after that and then it had 110 the year after that and I thought we were about at capacity then but we were too big for here so we moved it to the Melbourne Town Hall and I thought everyone who wanted to participate in it was at that point. But then out of the blue the next year we ended up with 170 stalls right. and then the next year it grew by 60 stalls again. So if, if that continues next year we're looking at it to be at least 300 stalls. And it's always free for everyone to have a stall, it's free to get in but it's just difficult fitting everyone in now it's grown yeah. to such a point. So we're trying to move that to a two days in fair. And then we just want to continue running our shop. That's what we want to do here. So we're under a bit of pressure at the minute because the Metro Tunnel have yeah. proposed to come directly through here. So we're negotiating with them at the minute to try and find us a new space and so we can continue doing what we do. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. But that's the only questions that yeah, I have. Yes. Cool. All <laughs> Thank done. you. Easy.
Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you all. <laughs> Melbourne is the central city of literature and it's a great place for anyone to go and connect with each other through diversity and story. We've loved showing you around Melbourne and two wonderful locations. We hope that you go out and explore the city and what literature means to you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and do the survey. Thanks for watching.